What is up, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about Luke Fickle, the press conference. Uh, Rasheed has some thoughts there. We haven't really had a chance to talk to him, and we're going to talk about uh, the basketball game that we just saw. Not the best ending, uh, but we're going to get into that and more on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, my friends? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings. I really appreciate everybody tuning in. As always, today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Sling TV. This episode of Locked On Badgers is brought to you by Sling TV. Don't miss this week's biggest matchups right here on Sling TV. Uh, Sling TV, the TV you love for the price you love. Try it today. All right, let's bring Rajiv in. Um... A lot, a lot I want to talk about today. I want to keep talking about Luke Fickle because this, this is just the the enormity of this news is still, I feel like hitting us right. We're, I don't even feel like we processed nearly all the angles here and the repercussions of what's about to happen. Uh, but I really haven't had a chance to talk to you since the press conference. I had some thoughts on it, but I definitely want to pick your brain. Where are you at after seeing him speak? You know that press conference was, and I think you mentioned it in an earlier show that uh, pressers are made to make the coach look good, right? Like that's kind of how they're designed. But I got to tell you, I, you know what? The the feeling that I felt after that press conference is I am proud to be a Badger right now. I mean, I am so proud of this university, this program. I know that there is a lot of divide in the fan base, pundits, whatever the case may be about Jim Leonard whether he should have got this job, but this is drawing a line in the sand for this program. We have been an organization. We've been a team that has been close to the playoff. That has won big 10 championships, but we've never ever been at the level of Alabama, Ohio state, Clemson, that group in 2010, Clemson, 2009, Clemson was a seven, eight win team. And then Dabo Sweeney showed up. And that program elevated itself to what they are now, which is a national powerhouse. Every single college football fan in this country wants their team to do what Clemson did, what Georgia has done. Every single person wants, every single person wants that. And we've never been that. But yesterday, Chris McIntosh, the chancellor and Luke Fickle basically stood up and said, all right, it, we're we're going to do this now. Like we're going to try this. Does it guarantee championships? No, but it guarantees that this pro this school is all in on football, putting their best foot forward and saying we're going to do this. They're gonna they they paid Luke Fickle what he wanted. They're going to pay their assist his assistants what he wants. They're they're dedicated to NIL. He's saying the right things. How can you not be just proud of this? Like this is what we want. We've always wanted a chance to be better and to be at the level of Clemson and Ohio State and those guys. And I don't know if we're ever going to get there, but I sure believe that this guy gives us the best chance. And I am pumped about it. And I I know that that press conference was made help you know made to pump us up. But how can you not be proud as a Badger fan right. after listening to that? Right, it was, but it worked. Right, <laughs> like it's like yeah. it's like comfort food is made to feel comfortable. It works. You know, but the press conference is made to feel feel good. It works. Now listen. Um, there's a big gap between having the right intentions. Right intentions is the wrong way to put it. There's a big gap between making the commitment and then getting there. Totally. Right? But, it, yeah. but it's setting it up. Have to do the first step first. Right? Like I've talked about this before on the show. There's there's a lot of baseball teams that spend a lot of money that are terrible. So you have to spend it wisely. But the first step is you have to spend it. You have to show you're going to spend the money. And I think – and I'm just going to dovetail onto your point here because I think the biggest thing with Badger fans, at least the ones that are really into it for the longest time have been, we we just want to know if the university really fully gives a crap, right? Like it's been the biggest frustration with the real diehard Badger fans that they're like, do they care about winning championships as much as we feel like we do? And I don't know if we've always been able to say, yeah, they do. I think now we can say, yeah, I think they do now. And that's exactly. no problem, but I mean, how how can you not like that? And I'll tell you what, he said a lot of other things that I just kind of picked up on here and there. And, you know, I really liked that, that he came in and said, look, I'm not here to to overtake relationships that Jim Leonard had with these people. I'm not here to replace Jim Leonard. It's in the relationship side. It's I'm, I'm here to build my own relationships with these players. And he clearly is trying to build that locker room and build that trust. He said, 
uh, trust, respect, and love. I think he said that that's what he's going to build right away. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I want to hear because he's not going to just come in and say, all right, this is what it's going to be. He's like, I'm going to to earn this these this team's respect, earn this these players' respect, and build the foundation, build upon the foundation that's already there, which he said, and he's going to do that in the right way. And I mean, it just it just feels like, and I could just be, you know, I, I am an optimist. I, we all know this. I just feel like we're at the precipice of something big. And maybe I drank the Kool Aid, but I did. And I just feel like this is us investing in this program and doing what we as fans have always wanted. Is it going to work? We don't know. But I want to be here. I want to be here for it. I'm in, and I want to be able to, to to say that yeah, we've got a shot, and this guy has done it, and there's no reason not to be excited right now. There's just no reason not to be. And I, the other thing I want to say, I'm sorry, one more thing, oh, is go, the please. players. So I, you know, when you're an 18 to 20 year old kid and you're going to play college football, you're away from your family. Coaches are like parents to you. A coach is like a father to you in some cases. And I feel like these players are are totally well within their right to defend Jim Leonard and mm-hmm. and what happened because look, they th- they see him as a father figure, especially those guys on the defensive side of the ball, like. He's been with them for a long time. And so you, you got to understand that, that they've, that they're going to defend the guy that they feel like is a parent to them. Right. And I just feel like some people have been kind of get on the players about it. Just let the players be. And they're now going to hear a new guy, but this guy's coming in saying, look, I know I got to build that relationship with you. And, and, and I think it, some guys are going to stay right. They're going to see that the, the, the Luke fickle brings potential that other coaches don't bring. And, I understand where the players are coming from. And I think that they, you know, let's give them a little space because they're, they've been through a lot, but Luke fickle is here to stay, man. And it's, this is, this is fun. This is just fun. Yeah. And by the way, I love optimistic regime. Like you're getting me pumped up. Like, let's go, let's get it. Um, And by the way, it's okay to like, to be optimistic with this stuff. This is a big time hire. All you have to do is go, go to YouTube, type in Luke fickle and watch every national head lose their mind over. He went to Wisconsin. Yo, that's a big move, right? It is a big move. Now, will it work out again? Nobody really knows, but it, there's there's a track record and a resume that he brings in tow. When he's packing up his his U-Haul and coming from Cincinnati, inside that U-Haul is a resume that has a playoff uh, you know, a playoff appearance. It is a resume that has recruiting chops. There's a resume that has Ohio State background. That that resume goes with him in that U-Haul to Madison, and that's a pretty doggone good resume. So. I wanted to ask you this, <clears throat> excuse me, and I don't think it's, well, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to um, bias the question. I'm just going to ask you, does this make it more or less likely that Graham Mertz might come back next year with a whole new coaching staff coming in? It's a, it's a really good question because I, uh, you can kind of see from both sides. Part of me thinks, well, you know, Graham Mertz is thinking if I'm Graham Mertz, I'm thinking, okay, well, we've got Luke Fickle. He's going to bring, um, you know, an offense. Like someone said, I think you said yesterday, he's going to bring the forward pass to, to Wisconsin. So that's good. And, you know, maybe he's excited about that. But on the other side, you got to look at it from the coach's perspective and realize he hasn't been performing. Everybody knows this. So the way I the way I see it is, I hate to answer like this because it's kind of being on the fence, but I feel like it's going to depend on what, what's in the transfer portal and who, we, who we're interested in. I know mm-hmm. a lot of Badger fans have brought up Cade McNamara. I don't necessarily think that's the right move for us. But I just feel like it's going to depend on what's there. Ultimately, though, my opinion right now is no, I don't think he's going to come back. And I think that this makes it less likely because the coaches, the new coaches, the new offensive scheme, the new offensive coordinator, they're going to want to make a change based on what they've seen. But who knows, right? I mean, clearly Mertz has talent. This university hasn't done him any favors. Like this program hasn't been the best to him. He hasn't been the best for the program. So could he still be good? Yes, I do believe that. And I've said that before, but ultimately, no, I think, I think this is done. This is it for Mertz. Just my thought. Yeah. I mean, I, I think no matter what, where I was, was I think it's unlikely he's coming back, right? Whether it was Jim Leonard staying, even if heck, whether it was Paul Chris staying or Jim Leonard staying or, you know, a new coach coming. I always thought it was kind of unlikely, um, but I think that this maybe opens the window time a little bit more, just maybe from more Mertz's perspective, like you said, I think you nailed it. Like it, it could be a breath of fresh air to have a new system. And if you're a coach coming in, you're looking at a quarterback room that is pretty bereft of talent depth, you know, and if you have a, a multiple year veteran, you come in and say, Hey, everyone's competing. Like you're not given anything, but if you want to come back and fight for it, 
it might be hard to turn down a guy who's been who's played a lot of Big Ten football from a room that doesn't have a lot of bodies, quite frankly. Now, obviously, like you said, we got to see what happens, but um, so much more to talk about. We got a bunch of comments, and we're going to get into the Wake Forest game next, and so so much more coming up on Luke Fickle. There is going to be a lot of coaches coming in. We're going to react to players going in and coming out. Yeah, this we're going to keep talking Luke Fickle because it is a gigantic news story. Uh, but next, we're going to talk about. Wake Forest, Wisconsin basketball. The game just happened. We're going to talk, a little, and we're going to get all the comments. We have a bunch of comments we're going to get to as well. But I do want to talk about Chucky Hepburn. What's with the inconsistency, and what do we know for sure about this uh, team so far? We're each going to take a couple turns on that. That's coming up next on Locked On Badgers with Rajiv. Uh, we do this show every every Tuesday. We're planning on me and Rajiv getting together, which is going to be awesome. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at Bet Online. I've talked about Bet Online a lot. Bet Online is your number one source for all your sports betting needs, information, live casino games. If you're into that, um, y'all know I love the the live in game betting and most of the futures betting. Right? I'm a Phoenix Suns fan. I got them winning the title. I'm a Niners fan. I got them in the Super Bowl. Right? So I I love making futures bets with my heart. I don't make those with my head. So I bet on my teams to get to the Super Bowl, win the NBA Finals. I had money on the uh, the Braves last year because I'm also a Braves fan. So BetOnline is my number one source for that. You can find all the odds. It's easy to use. They're an industry standard. Plus, like I said, live casino games, Vegas games. It's a lot of fun. Do it responsibly. But it's a good way to kind of throw your sports, either knowledge or your sports heart out there and have a little money behind it. It, it spices it up a little bit. Let's get some spicy. Uh, it's the fastest, easiest way to do it. Grab your mobile device. Head to the website today. BetOnline, where the game starts. As always, uh, I want to thank everybody so much for tuning in. Come in a lockdown badger so we can chop it up with y'all. I love the disagreements that you guys have when you disagree with me. I love throwing that up here and we can talk about it. We get smarter when we disagree as long as we do it respectfully. If you like the show, hit that subscribe button. We did officially beat the Gophers. I know I had a couple people ask me. We actually crushed them. Um, no disrespect to my man Kane over at, at Locked On Gophers, but yeah. At we least we could beat them at something this year. That's good, right? <laughs> got the dub. And I appreciate y'all so much for that. But let's keep it going. I still have a goal to make this the number one big 10 locked on channel and i think we can do it because of guys like rajiv joining us and because of the community we're building on the discord um all right let's keep this going i want to first start talking about uh the game and then i want to get into some comments there's a mixture of uh football and basketball comments but let's react a little bit to the game that just happened wisconsin loses a three-point game to wake forest rajiv big picture thoughts Big picture thoughts is, you know, are that we've been we played a lot of close games and that's going to help us down the stretch. I know it's it's tough to lose close games like we did against Kansas and tonight, but close games with this team that, you know, lost um, Davison and lost Davis. I think we need that experience and I'm, I'm happy for that. I think that had we won tonight, we would have come on and said, what a gritty performance. We fought through it. So a lot of positives that have to be taken from mm-hmm. tonight. Um, I have even in a recent article I did for Badger Notes have been critical of Chucky Hepburn and Stephen Crowell, like I think many Badger fans have. And let's give them a little credit tonight. They both shot the ball better than they have recently. <clears throat> they both still have things that sometimes just make me shake my head and I just don't understand. But we got to give them some credit, right? They 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 did well tonight. They scored. Um, Crowell made some shots from the outside, which really helps to open up the the paint area for Tyler. And I think that's that's it's important for him to do and it's, he has to make those shots. Chucky, I mean, listen, he was hot, but also he took some shots that I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, mm-hmm. you know, those heat checks aren't necessary. When you have a lead, sometimes a heat check is necessary, but when you have the right look still, you don't need to do it with two seconds gone off the shot clock. Build into the game. So saw a lot of good things, saw a lot of bad things. Um, you know, Max Klesmet, I think he I think we had two points tonight. I mean, that's, that's something that um, – I, I, you know, he needs to be more productive, but let's also give credit to Wake Forest. Appleby, yeah. my gosh, the guy had 30 points. He was virtually unstoppable, and there's not really much you can do when a guy like that is playing um, as, as well as he is. We had to kind of stay step for step with him. We did that. Um, we, we, you know, we competed really well. Good, bad, like the fact that it was a close game because I think that gives us experience, and, you know, we still need to see improvement from our best players. Yeah, a lot of that's really well said. Um, I like, I really enjoy the perspective you bring to to some of these because you're totally right. If we had won a game by a couple points, it would have been, oh, we we pulled it out, yeah. really good game. Well, the game really isn't that different if you win by two or lose by two, win by three, right. lose by three, right? right? A lot of the components are the same. And, and we did a lot of good things. We have to acknowledge that. Yep, a lot of good things out of this game. 
but a lot of the same issues, it's just like the Dayton game, right? There was a lot of bad stuff in that game, but you just won it. So you, you tend to not focus on the bad as much. But the the issues that this team has, and I've talked about it quite a bit. Here, here let me let me just rant on this one really quick. Because and even Rajiv, you said it a little bit, and I just want to take not issue with it because certainly um I don't, I'm not telling anyone how to think on this, but people talk about the the tough shots that Chucky Heffern takes, right? Like the bad shots. And for me, I think people may be looking at that a little wrong, potentially. I don't I think the reason it looks like he's taking bad shots at times is because he struggles to create space and those are the shots he has to take. Like he has to be a bit of a bad a bad shot maker because he's not against quicker guards, he's not creating space. So a lot of his shots are going to be contested. It's kind of like Johnny Davis last year, right? He took a lot of quote unquote bad shots, but he made them. I think Chucky's trying to f- kind of force that role, but what he's found is it's difficult with the other team's best perimeter defend, defender on him. That is, it's really difficult to create those spaces. Even some of the layups he's missed. I'm seeing people say, you know, on Twitter, what's with, with what's with the missing layup? And first of all, that breakaway layup you should have made. No excuses yeah, there. I mean, obviously. But he's missing other layups at the rim, and they're saying, just make a layup. And I'm, in my head, I'm like, that's tough when you're a 6'1 guard that lacks explosiveness at the rim, right? So for me, I get it. He is taking bad shots, but that's almost going to have to be part of his game, and he's going to have to learn how to make tough contest, contested shots, if that makes sense. I, I also think that that's part of the offense, too, though, that we're, we're, we need mm. to create more late. We talked about this before. you got to create more late in the shot clock. I don't want to just see him doing those because you're right. He takes these he takes too many fadeaway jumpers where I'm like, that's that can't be the best shot we're going to get. It just mm-hmm. can't be. And if, if it means an extra pass and someone cutting the hoop and trying something different, we got to take that risk. Yeah, that's very fair. I I think there's a lot of standing around that's built into this offense. And quite frankly, by the way, I talked about this last year with um, Rafael Davis, former Purdue star, Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year one year. He came on and he talked about it wasn't just the Badgers offense, but he talked about college offenses and the Badgers offense and how mechanical they are. Like he said, you go to the next level and there's just so much more spacing and the college really hasn't caught up, caught up yet. And you can see that in the Badgers offense. There's a lot of movement in the Badgers offense that – quite frankly, is mechanical and isn't really helping to get a better shot. You know, even guys like Carter Gilmore, when you kick it out to him, there's plays where he doesn't even look at the rim. That's unacceptable. Uh, it really is. I'm not I'm not crushing Carter Gilmore. You have to at least look at the rim, create that threat. It draws the defense out. And if you're just passing to an open forward on the perimeter, he's not even looking at the rim. He's just looking to reverse it. That is really mechanical offense in a shot clock era of basketball. And you can't do that and create consistent good looks. So, sorry, I was uh, on one breath. But my point is, like, it, the offense gets mechanical at times, and I do think that's some of coaching, and then it reverts to Chucky, we need you to bail us out, which then leads to some of the bad shots. Right, and one other thing that will help us is better post-play. You know, look, Tyler Wall is really good down there, obviously. He's, you know, he's our guy. He scores a ton of points for us. Steven Crowell, I can't – I need to see some post moves out of this guy. I don't I don't see any drop steps. I don't see any up and unders. I don't see muddy pump fakes. I see a lot of stepping away from the basket and hook shot. I don't want to see that. Go up strong, practice your post moves, and let's do more down there. He's seven feet tall. Mm-hmm. There is he should be able to go up strong. You know, I know Justin says a lot about his his balance is, is a problem, and, and he's right. And that that's an issue for him down low, but he has got to get better down there. Being better on the post and not forcing stuff up even down there is going to be better down there. Getting better post shots is going to allow us to open things up behind us, get better Mm -hmm. threes. And late in the shot clock, when we need a bucket, we can rely on better post play. Now, Tyler has been doing that since he's been with us, and that's huge for us. But Crowell has to be able to do the same thing. And it's really frustrating. It's it's my biggest frustration with with him because he's seven feet tall. He's got to get better looks down there. Can I tell you if it if it's not happening now, it's not going to happen this season. I I, I agree, but that's still frustrating. <laughs> it is frustrating. No, one hundred percent. Your point is incredibly valid, and and but if he's not doing it now, it's not in the bag. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not in his bag for whatever reason. So and listen, some dudes just don't have the footwork. Some dudes don't have the feel in the post. Like it was, and you brought it up again. We're talking about the dichotomy of good and bad. It was great to see him pop out and hit a couple threes. Like he needs to hit open threes, otherwise that pick and roll doesn't really work. So for him to hit a couple threes was big. But I'm telling you right now, and I see a bunch of comments, um, you know, Bo Dragon, and we're going to get to all the comments, guys. I'm not ignoring you guys, I promise. But I see comments talking about, you know, he's he's not hitting the post moves. He's going to be done. And that's just not him this year. I'm sorry, guys. Like, I wish it was too. But it's 
players don't change mid season that drastically. Like that's an off season. I was really expecting it coming into the season though. I I wanted to see some of those moves and I just, you know, Bo Ryan used to be really big on developing post moves with all those guys. And I'm not saying Greg guards, not trying to do that. And and it's, but that was something that was a a real focus of Bo Ryan. And, you know, I think back to guys like Mike Wilkinson that learned all that stuff and was just a stud for us in the program. But you know, it's just a frustration that we have. I think you'll still see games where he has more success. Like wake has some big dudes, you know, but I would say if anyone's expecting him to be start drop stepping and up and under and really, really, that's just not him. That's not him this year. Yeah, I know. I just, I, you know, it's just, you would think that, that he would have developed that part of his game a little more. Right. I mean, I hear you. I hear you. All right. Coming up, we're going to get into the comments next and talk a little bit about maybe what's one thing with this team after seven games that I'm going to, you're going to plant your flag in the ground and say, I know this for sure. We're going to do that next on Locked on Badge with Rajiv. Uh, very appreciative of his time as always. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. Um, let's let's bang on some comments here because we got a bunch of them, and I always feel bad when I don't get to all of them. Um, this one comes up a lot, and Rajiv, I don't know if you have a better answer on this or not. Uh, Timothy Drieslin, can someone pass information on academic restrictions and if Fickle had those with the Bearcats? So Cincinnati doesn't have the same level of academic restrictions as Wisconsin. I got to be honest, um, I don't know in detail the level that Wisconsin has outside of the, the foreign language you know, minimum thing that's been talked about a ton. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I also don't know either. I feel like Justin would have a good answer on this. I think he knows some of this stuff a little more, more than we do, but I, obviously there's restrictions are there. And my understanding is that, you know, look, Fickle's going to have to live with that. And I'm sure those were part of the discussions that he had with Mac about, you know, going into this season and understanding before he took this job, what those restrictions are. And if Fickle was going to be able to work with them, there's no doubt that, that we have that. I mean, the Big Ten is the, it has a very high standing in, in the AAU as far as the, you know, the American Association of Universities. We have a lot of academic standards, and we don't let those go. Um, so, you know, and, and, I'm, and I'm good with that. I, I, I like well, that, um, you know, I'm, I'm a, I went to the University of Wisconsin, so I understand that. But I, I'm okay with, with that as long as the discussions were had, which I'm sure they were. I think that Fickle's okay with it and Mac's okay with it. But, you know, yeah, I agree. agree. I, I fortunately can't really answer too much more about that. Yeah, and I, I, I'll just really quickly say, I, I don't think it's as big a deal as people, and I'm not saying, Timothy, you are, but that question comes up a lot. I don't think it's a giant barrier. I think Wisconsin will be able to get the kids that they they want and target. Uh, Zach Ramsey, what's up, my friend? Uh, first live in a minute. Glad to have Fickle as a head coach. The ceiling is stupid high with him. And some of these comments we're just going to get through, but I appreciate your comment. Um, obviously, Bo Dragon's always commenting, slow your roll, comparing Wisconsin to potentially Clemson and Alabama regime. Slow your roll. I mean, Michigan has higher academic standards than we do. So come on, like that's, that's not, a, that's, there's no reason that academics are going to get in the way of this. I don't, I don't buy that at all. Uh, Uncultured Barbarian, my bud who's an Auburn fan wishes they would have gotten fickle over freeze. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, I think if you go back the last couple of years, there's a lot of programs who, who would say this, insert my coach. I wish we would have gotten fickle over him. Like, yeah. I don't think that's hyperbole. Yeah, no, totally. And what's up, Uncultured? He's such a good friend of the show. Um, I um, like, I, listen, I think a lot of programs are doing this right now. I think Nebraska's doing this. I think there's a whole list of people saying, whoa, what did Wisconsin do to get this guy? And we need to be saying the same thing and just being that much more excited about it. You know, I heard a great, um, I forget which national show this on. I wish I could, because I want to give credit always. This I didn't come up with this, but somebody said, uh, and one of the national guys said, you know what this is? This is Luke Fickle going into an old barn in the Midwest and find, finding like this cherry sports car with some dust on it, some dirt on it, right? Maybe a, a, a wheel missing, but he looked under the hood and he said, oh yeah, this can be this can be really powerful. And th- I thought that was a really interesting way to, to frame Wisconsin. Like if you look under the hood at a program that has a lot of history, it's the only big, it's the only D1 program in a state that does produce some talent. <laughs> close to a lot of big cities it's the infrastructure is there you just need the right guy to come in and supercharge it exactly and when you build a program from the infrastructure up from the foundation up like wisconsin is and barry alvarez deserves the credit for doing that he built this foundation he's the godfather of this program and now to elevate it to the next level we've done that and now we need the the new hire Mm -hmm. the new coach with new ideas luke fickle has that so you put these two things together the foundation that wisconsin has built that barry built and Luke Fickle and what he's brought to college football, there is upside. And you know what? I'll say one more thing about this. Um, as far as you know, people getting too excited about it, hope is a huge part of sports, right? I mean, yeah. sports is so much hope. Every 
every sports fan has it. Every team has it. What's wrong with it? I mean, this is what we're here for. 19th warrior friend of the show as well. We want Bama too soon. <laughs> no, but here's what I'd say. Cause I want to ping on what Rajiv said. Like as long I'm all about, and I've said this so many times, we all want the same thing. We're all Badger fans. We're all pulling in the same direction, right? And as long as we're being respectful, let fans fan how they want to fan, right? Some fans totally. are more pessimistic. Some are more optimistic. Some are more realistic. Some are more angry. Like, let fans fan however they want to fan, you know? And I think we could – and I think we're doing that on Lockdown, by the way. If you come in the Discord, we don't have any any flaming of people. Like, it's respectful. Like, we do that on this show. There could be a lot more of that. Um but a whole I like, man. I like this comment that Jeffrey K just put up, by the way. It's right under yeah. the right under Nike the Warrior. It's a good comment. Uh, first of all, anytime we get a first time uh, first time guy on the stream, we'll bring you on. He says, Jeffrey K says, can we just accept the fact as fans that we can be happy for a new coach and happy for what Jimmy did and will still do? You don't have to pick sides. Sucks that so many people pick sides. That's perfectly said. This is a really good comment because yeah, we're allowed. We're, we we don't have to be. One way or the other, like this is this what what's happening for the program right now is great. And we've talked about a lot on the show. Jimmy Leonard has been a, such a great person for this program. And yeah, like it's all good, right? There's we don't have to talk about so many bad things. There aren't a lot of bad things going on right now. No, agreed. It's all good. Um, we're going to get bang through some more comments. Uh, no, not a whale. I, I Again, if I mispronounce the name, that's my fault. Not a whale says Keanu Benson got disrespected today. He was named third team that's all by the media. Or no, by the absurd. coach. Absurd. Yeah. Absurd that Keanu Benton is not. Keanu Benton is one of the best nose tackles in the country. I, I am. Get out of here with this third team nonsense. Honestly, come on. He, yeah, the, you said that perfectly. That's straight disrespect. You know what that is? Here's what that is. Let's be honest. That's that's media members who aren't watching a six and six team. Yep, that's it's, it's because of the record. It's because Wisconsin six and six, and everyone's going to say, well, they can't really be that good. But if you watch the games and you look at what our defense did this year, yeah, the defense is that good. Benton was ragdolling people like that. Yeah, that's total disrespect. Old Rivers Farm says tough loss, but Appleby won the game for Wake. Going to Rajiv's point, man, you got to give Wake some credit. He had a great game. Now, here's an interesting thought I had during the game. I put this on Twitter. This feels like the type of game you brought Kamari McGee here for, right? To put him on a quick guard who's kind of dicing us up. He didn't play. Like it's that the it's weird to me that he can't even get on the court for a few minutes as a quicker guard. He's the quickest guard we have, just physically. To that to- that that eight man rotation kind of has been, we've settled into an eight man spot right now. And it doesn't include McGee. I agree. I mean, he's a quick guy and we don't know what he can do yet. I mean, obviously Greg guard knows what he can do, but we mm-hmm. haven't seen it. And I'm, I'm, I'm one who wants to see what kind of potential this guy can bring. Yep. And listen, guard sees him in practice. Like, yeah. so totally what Rajiv is saying. I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying you need to put him in guards messing up, but what I am saying could you use him for a, again? I guess I'm just contradicting what I just said, but could you use him for a couple minutes, like as a defensive change of pace on a guard that's dicing you up? I don't know. It, it's interesting to me that guard apparently doesn't think so. I think that's interesting. Huh. Let's keep going here because we get a bunch of comments. Um, and I'm not going to be able to get to them all, which I apologize for. Monty D, friend of the show, Chucky continues to try too hard. He needs to play a team game. Um, I think we've talked about that, but yeah, the shot selection, another one from Steven Watson, shot selection, need better shot selection. You know, and we have a bunch of comments like that. Second half defense was poor, gave up too many open threes. They they had a couple, um, I would call them on characteristic breakdowns where Wake had wide open shooters. I know Connor had one in the corner. There was one where there's miscommunication between Wall and somebody. I feel like we got lazy on defense a little bit. I thought Chucky got a little lazy in the second half. Um, I thought Crowell got lazy on the pick and roll. We got just shredded by that pick and roll. Um, yeah, I mean. I think we got we got lazy. Definitely the, the defense dropped a little bit in the second half. But that also, again, it's a testament to what this guy Appleby's doing at Wake. I mean, he's mm-hmm. when, when you face a guy like that, I mean, there's not, there's not much. When, when, when Johnny Davis scored 40 points last year against Purdue, there's not much you can do about that. When, you know, when Frank Kaminsky drop, drops 40 points, there's not much you can do. We've had him too. So it's like it's there's not much you're going to do to stop guys like that. No, and that's a real team. You lost at home. It's early season. Like, by the way, last year's team had a lot of close games too. And you know why we won all those? Because we had a closer. We don't really have a closer right now. You know, Johnny Davis was an elite guy who gave buckets in the clutch clutch moments of a game. Like this team doesn't have that. And it's 
doesn't mean they're a bad team, but there, there's going to be some issues in, in close games. I, I um, feel like I feel like Justin is going to go crazy if we don't talk about Connor CJ. We haven't really brought his name up yet today. <laughs> oh, um, you know, it's really the flow of the show. There hasn't really been any comments of a CJ. <laughs> but yeah, what do you think of, of his game today? I thought, I mean, I think he's still getting better um, every game. And I think that, you know, he took some good shots. He took some shots he didn't make. He, a, a shooter's got to take shots. They're not going to make them all. Sometimes they're just not going to fall. Um, defensively, I thought he had a couple weak points tonight. And I, I wrote this week that I feel like he's, he's got growth in that area. And I expect him to continue to grow. I don't think he's ready for the starting lineup yet, but I do think he needs to be in there in key game time situations. When we need points, he needs mm-hmm. to be in there. You know, you said the word gravity um, to, to, to draw defenders. And I feel like, you know, he's a guy that needs to be in there a little bit more than he is right now, but I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about him when we get to our, um, you know, things we're going to put. Oh, our I don't, I don't think we're going to have time for that one. Oh, yeah. well, there you go. <laughs> I'm always underestimate the amount of comments we get, which is absolutely amazing. I think we should just do a couple shows where we just bang out comments and we'll yeah. do a panel. We'll get a bunch of people. Um, but I, I do want to point out one of the things with the a siege and, and you said he's going to get better. He had a layup blocked at the rim. He had a really nice cut. You know, if he just goes up with his left hand on that a little quicker, that's a layup where he switched to his right. Like he has so much growth in his game is what I'm saying. Like yeah. all the fundamentals are there. I'm really excited to see where he goes. This is one uh, we've talked about ad nauseum, Ooh. Tim rebounds. It's, it's really the defense of rebounding and they're going to, I've already said like, they're going to struggle all year with that. It just is what it is. Yeah. I mean, we're, we rebound. Okay. At times, but Crowell, I feel like even though he had, he leads the team in rebounds. He, we well, actually maybe wall does, but he um, we've got to be better. We got to block out better. We've got to get better positions. You know, I mean, it's, it is going to be something that we're going to struggle with, but we've got to mitigate the problems. Mm-hmm. And you have a couple of years, Beaudre, uh calls Crowell a seven foot stick man. And CBS Sh- Schneek uh, says definitely need more from Crowell. Here's the problem with Crowell. I, I saw someone say part of our rebounding is on Crowell. Um, not being the problem is Crowell is a positional rebounder. And what that means in basketball sense is he will get rebounds. He's an area rebounder that will just come to his area, but he's not someone who's going to go get rebounds out of his area. So a lot of offensive rebound opportunities for another team are off bad bounces, long bounces. Like Crowell's not going to get those. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you need a guy like last year, Johnny Davis, that flies in athletic wings, get those rebounds. And again, that's an area where we're a little light this year, I think. Uh, let's see. A bunch more comments I appreciate. We're not going to get to all of them today, unfortunately, because um, I don't do a good enough job of of organizing that. I did, did want you to give an opportunity because I, I kind of prepped it and I just lost track of time, but – what is one of the things that you think you can say definitively about this team after seven games that you're comfortable saying, I put the flag in the dirt? Um, I think that Connor CG is going to be a star. I, I really believe that. That's t- I was not, I was one who had, you know, I took the under in our little over under 12 minutes with this guy. And, but listen, he's going to be a star and he has swagger. He has a, clearly a great shot. He doesn't have fear. And, you know, he's he's going to be a, f- a future big, big piece of our program. The other one I would mention is that Wall is still going to be our guy this year. He's still going to be our best player. He's going to be our flag bearer. Um, you know, he he does everything on the court. And I, re- I really appreciate the things that Wall does for this team. Yeah, I love Wall. Absolutely love Wall. That's really well said. And by the way, the other thing with the season, he had, what, I think at least two offensive rebounds. Like, he he makes a lot of the little hustle plays as well. He's so much more than just a spot-up shooter. Um yeah, I think that's really well said. The one thing I would plant my flag in is we came into the season, I think, thinking that the backup five was going to be the weakest spot on the team. I think backup point guard has pretty clearly, just because I think Hodges can actually come in and just bang people around, probably if he had to, it feels like there is zero confidence right now in Kamari McGee. I mean, he obviously didn't play. And I just don't think Lindsay is a natural point guard, even though he's done really well for what he's been asked he- to do. He deserves credit. I think. I think the. I mean, with him being in there, we've seen a little bit more from the point guard position than we have from the five because we haven't really seen Hodges other than a few minutes here mm-hmm. and there. Lindsey's clearly got some decent playing time. He's made some shots. He's shooting a decent percentage from three. So, you know, I think that. But yeah, as far as depth, though, I mean, I would be afraid if if Chucky had four fouls early in the second half and we had to see Lindsey the whole second half. We don't want to see that. No, I I think quite frankly, both those spots are kind of soft, right? Yeah. The backup five and the backup point guard. All right. Um, we're gonna wrap up there. Everybody, I've again I didn't get to all the comments, but I try not to drag the shows out too long because I, I think I don't want to put people to sleep, quite frankly. And you know we're gonna be back tomorrow talking to you again. Uh actually tomorrow I got John Garcia Jr. Sports Illustrated coming up. So stick around for that. I think Thursday I got a special guest coming up that you guys will enjoy. 
Uh, maybe Friday we'll get the gang back together, do a round table. Um, and then make sure you check out what Rajiv's doing. He's been doing some writing on Badger Notes as well. Again, we can't give enough Rajiv. So we're going to tweet that out as well. Give him a follow. Check out his work. Uh, for everybody in the comment I didn't get, uh, comments I didn't get to, uh, Rob, CS, I see Scott in the comments, uh, Guy Bush, and more. I apologize. I do read them all, I promise. With that on Wisconsin, um, tough loss today. But this team this team's going to battle this year, which I think we're both pretty confident in. On Wisconsin, we'll talk to you tomorrow, and uh, peace. Thank you.